Hey guys, it's Marty from OwingsArt.com and today I'm going to take a look at the Pentallic Graphite Drawing Pencil. This is a set of six, but they also come in a set of 12. They just have a little higher range on the hard side. So on the H, if you get the 12 set versus this set. I figured this set gave me enough of a range to test and to do a good demonstration that uh, really would highlight and illustrate the pros and cons of these particular graphite pencils. So the first thing you notice when you open them up is they look a little bit like um, a Stedler pencil. So they're, they have a hexagonal or six-sided shape to them, which is excellent because then they don't uh, roll off a tilted work surface. Um, they are also striped the way the Stedler are as well. And um, basically the markings on the pencils themselves are very similar. Now these particular pencils are made in Taiwan, so I'm pretty sure they're not the Stedler uh, made at the Stedler manufacturing plants. They're just probably coloring them to, you know, sort of make them, class them up a little bit, make them look a little bit more like the Stedler pencils. But they are not. They are indeed the Pentelic pencil. But I was looking forward to reviewing these pencils. I've had good luck with some of the Pantelic uh, pros, uh, products in the past. Um, here's some specs on the pencils. Like I said, they're made in Taiwan, the six and the 12 uh, pencil set, variety of hardnesses and softnesses. They're non-toxic. Um, I men mentioned the hexagonal shape and they're cedar casings, but I don't think the cedar casing on these pencils is as high quality as, as some of the better brands. However, that does not detract from uh, the pencil sharpenability or anything like that. I'll get into that later on. But today I'm going to cover testing out each of these pencils. I'll just make some marks and um, we'll take a look at that in each of the color uh, tones. So you've got the, the 2H, the HB, the 2B. There's a 4B, a 6B, and an 8B. I think that covers them all. So here I'll lay out each of the marks, and you can see here I start out with the lightest or hardest uh, pencil in the set, which is the 2H. And it's not extremely uh, light, uh, maybe what you'd expect from a higher quality 2H pencil, but it's still not bad at all. Um, the HB gets a little darker, so what I've noticed with these Pentelic uh, graphite pencils is that maybe the tones are one shade to the left. So in other words, if you're using a 2H, you're probably gonna get an HB uh, uh, shade compared to maybe other pencils. If you're in the HB, you're probably gonna get a 2B shade. So so that's something to look, look for. Um, that's not an H, that's a number four right there, 4B. And then this is the 6B, which I was probably my favorite or one of my favorite pencils in this set. I like it. It's just kind of the right balance of light and dark and it wasn't too soft, although I'll talk about this a little later, but one of the things I noticed uh, in addition to the shade being just slightly left of the of what I'm used to is that in the softer colors and the Bs, the, the leads are, the graphite is pretty soft. So uh, you, you'll notice that right away. Although you may be, that may be what you're looking for. Um, but if I compare it to, for instance, a Faber-Castell or a Stedtler in that range, I'll tend to like that there's a little bit more hardness on the top end of the softer range, so the Bs. So in that, you can, I think, for me, it's just easier to sharpen and there's less lead flying around and things like that. Now, if you're in for that softer effect, though, that's perfectly fine and well within um, the capabilities of this particular pencil. Once I go through all this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a little sphere here, or maybe a couple of them, and then I will uh, go into a full drawing demonstration later on in the video and walk you through uh, that process as well. But for here, you know, if you've watched my videos before, you know I like to draw some spheres here and get an idea of the pencil's basic performance. Try to get a pretty good circle going here. It's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but good enough for my purposes. And then I just start to shade in um, the sphere a little bit and get a feel for volume on it. Leave a little light striking the right hand uh, 
side here, upper right hand quadrant, and then start to darken in the edges a little bit. So here I'm using the HB is a little harder, and then I'm going to go to the, I went to the 2B, and eventually to the 4B right here, and 6B finally. So I'm using just a variety of colors or shades in the layer and layering them on top of each other and, and they do just fine. No problems at all. Um, nothing, I don't note anything extraordinary about it, but I don't note anything that would detract or taking, take away from these pencils. And when you think about the cost um, and the expense of these pencils, which is super reasonable, uh, that kind of puts the value proposition above average. So you, just a little last bit of shading on this uh, on the sphere here. I like the way the pencils fit in this tin. There's a little plastic um, piece underneath that hold the pencils just in nicely so they're not loose or rolling around in there so you don't have to worry about your leads breaking inside the pencil if the, le if the tin gets kicked around or anything like that. In addition to that, if you look to the left inside the tin cover, you can see there's a little piece of foam liner in there that just puts a little bit uh, enough pressure on the pencils to hold them in snugly so there's no you can hold this tin and shake it back and forth and you won't hear a sound. Um, it's, they're perfectly cozy in this nice little uh, home here. Not like other pencil uh, tins that come and you know you can shake around the pencils and they rattle inside the tin because um, they're not in there very good. So for sharpening, I was really impressed by the these pencils and the way they sharpened up really nicely. I use the 6B, I'd kind of worn the, the point off that uh, by using it but you can see this is a nice German sharpener with a good German blade and it just cuts like butter into the cedar wood and the graphite and you know what I look for here is any breakage any weird wood uh, splintering or anything like that in the casing and I got none of that and I put this pencil you can see it's a really long sharp point and I do that on purpose just to make sure that um, that I'm not getting that kind of breakage I mentioned. Now for erasing, the other thing I want to look for when I erase this, uh, the marks here, is just what are the residue or remnant lines left underneath? And you can see here it really cleans up nice. So I give these pencils really high marks for their erasability, which is nice because if you're the type of artist that uses a reductive technique, and that's a fancy way for saying you draw and then you use an eraser or remove stuff, just as I'm doing with this little portrait right here, um, that's really a nice quality uh, to have in a, in a good graphite pencil. So, you know, I didn't like the background I had quickly drawn in there, so I'm going to take that out. And then I want to clean up her face a little bit because I just don't, looks like she has a black eye and a sort of a Hitler mustache. And uh, it's just, I want to fix her up a little bit. So I'm going to jump into that and clean that up and then move on to a full-fledged uh, drawing uh, instruction segment in this video.
All right, it's time to get into the full-fledged uh, drawing demonstration here. I'm going to start with a harder pencil because what I want to do here is make light marks. Now you can see right here I've drawn a small portrait box here. So that'll give me sort of the area of focus on this piece of paper. And I'm using a sketchbook for this. It's one I've done some drawings in. And I wanted to keep this particular portrait in this book. So I've got a sketchbook out and I outline this, not heavy. Remember, don't use heavy lines, but if you can draw a little box around your area of focus, it helps. One reason I do that is because what I'm going to do in a minute here is divide this into thirds. So if you've heard of the rule of thirds in art, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go out, Google it, and look it up. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide this drawing into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. I'll be left with nine small boxes that are basically equal pieces, uh, equal little boxes inside of this larger box. Now I'll explain my rationale behind that in a moment just as soon as I draw out and measure the, um, the grid here. So, and, and another thing to Google out there if you haven't is the grid method. So look for that because this is a way uh, to draw that has been used for centuries and centuries. The old masters used this method um, to uh, help coordinate and map out their drawings. Uh, before they did paintings on top of them and things like that. So that's just a little background there. So with this grid here now drawn, you can see I'm very light. Everything I do at this point is very light. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to go back and just correct any errors uh, with very light marks. It's harder to correct errors with heavy, hard lines than it is with very light lines. So make sure your lines are light and you might make a half a dozen or so corrections your first time through. That's expected. That's what you should be doing and that's what you're looking for. So you can see there I just jumped on the eraser, erased some marks because they were too dark. Even the lining around his glasses right now is a little dark for where I want to be but it's okay for the purposes of the, this demo but when you're drawing yourself uh, take it easy on the on the dark colors. You'll get to it. It'll come But at first you want to draw very lightly so you can make those corrections uh, on the fly and then it won't ruin your your drawing with a lot of uh, you know, indented pencil marks and deep uh, you know, Grooves in your drawing paper So once I've got the basic outline in, I'm sort of starting to block in the shadows and I use negative space for that. So if you look for the places where there isn't any activity or whatever or detail and you kind of map that out, squint your eyes or blur your eyes, and you can see the major areas that you need to darken or keep light. So before I ever get to tone or value or anything like that, I want a nice good line drawing here with an outline of where I'm going to do my shading. And that's, again, just another reason to keep the pencil marks very, very light when you're doing that part. So I uh, can't emphasize that enough. So now I'm almost too dark for where I want to be right here. But again, uh, I'm moving a little quicker on this video, but you can see there I'm starting to block in the major parts and uh, shadows and starting to add a little bit more value at this point. So, and sometimes if you want, you could just draw out a little uh, a, a scale a grid, a scale of your uh, tones. So if you've ever seen that, uh, anybody do that, uh, it's very interesting because that's the, that's exactly the tones you want to use. You don't want to deviate from that uh, once you lay it out. So there's this guy basically um, done for all intents and purposes and he took about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. I sped up the video, but you know now I want to go back with the eraser and soften some of the edges a little bit. And, uh, that's part of what uh, you learn over time too, is just to go back and not be afraid to take out some of the some of the marks that you don't like. You know, um, and there's different types of erasers you can do that with, including like the fine edge of a pink pearl eraser. Or very, uh, they have like pen type erasers where you can, uh, it's just a very, very fine tip. And you go back and you can work work in uh, sort of your reductive techniques or moving line marks. 
Well, let's see. So these uh, sketches were done. I used a pentallic and then I went over it with a graphite wash pencil. So then I could later watercolor some of the marks. Of course, this was done with all watercolor pencil and graphite. And this is uh, this was done with just a pit marker, a Faber-Castell pit marker. Same with this uh, guy playing the bass. And so here's another look at the portrait I just did. Um, sort of an aerial view of these. Here's the rankings finally. So um, you know I like the hardness. The softness, I was, they were a little weak on the B range, uh, the softer end, but I liked, uh, I liked it just the same. And you know, my final ranking a seven, which is pretty good above average. And I really had to consider the value proposition here because these pencils are very inexpensive. So it makes a lot of sense if you're starting out or you just need an extra pencil, graphite pencil set, these would be awesome for that. And they come in a great tin. Well, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share the video if you would. And, uh, well, this has been a look at the Pentallic Graphite Pencils, and this has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. Have a great day, everybody. So long.